You know, one of the one of the experiences I've had uh, listening to DMLs, especially when we're listening them to in high power applications, mm -hmm. uh, has been um, perceived level. You know, it's okay. it's uh, it's interesting because uh, in a typical loudspeaker that has relatively high uh, sensitivity and are designed to deliver very high SPL, uh, you can hear uh, changes in in character and timber. Uh, as you start increasing level. And uh, in my experience, it's, been, it's a combination of things that impact that characteristic. It could be, one, the fundamental acoustic design of the device we're listening to um, has relatively high distortion characteristics or artifacts created by very deep loading mm -hmm. or you know, uh, the impedance of the horn structures. Um, placement of loudspeakers relative to each other that'll mm -hmm. create interference and changes. Um, the amplification used um, maybe is not ideal, especially in the areas where we're most you know, sensitive to the vocal area, which impacts intelligibility so much and the human ear is so sensitive to. Mm. With a DML, it's a slightly different experience. Um, I hear a, a high degree of clarity uh, and a very, very good control of the odd harmonics being generated. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, one of the one of the things that happens constantly is that the the, the distortion characteristics and the, that character of a box uh, um, relative to the components, so woofers, <laughs> mid ranges, horns, etc. Yeah. Uh, that character seems to dominate. So that as you increase the level, the output level, um, if we have problems or or the, dis the distortion and the odd harmonics of those devices. Uh, seem to mask any problem that you'll have in the electronic side mm -hmm. of the equation. With DMLs, there's almost no masking of that, and you not only get um, very, very high, what I would call dynamics, because you're able to maintain audio relative to uh, noise, yes. yeah. where you don't have noise collapsing and catching up with audio level, and then you know, that's the point on the, mix, on the mixing console where you go, okay, we've reached it, let's turn it down. Mm -hmm. You're able to maintain that relationship very well, which provides very high dynamics mm -hmm. and uh, on a very pleasant relationship between level uh, and quality mm -hmm. where you don't see that character change. It's, it's very constant. Wow. Um, it also leads us to hopefully find uh, better solutions for amplification because now we're listening to the problems in the electronics. Down the chain, yep. yes. I think also perhaps one way of looking at that as well is you know, most distortion components in, in any loudspeaker come from the motor system, non-linearities mm -hmm. in the motor system to, to a large degree. Um, you know, and you know if you have a, let's say, a 10-inch or 12-inch drive unit moving a certain amount, then the excursion that that's driving it's undergoing means the spider is now moving in out of its linear regime. The coil is perhaps moving towards the edges of its linear BL profile. When you have a, an object radiating sound of this sort of surface area, the movement is much, much less. Yeah. And so you're not moving the exciter, the spider's not moving the BL, you know, the coil's not moving out of the BL much. So of course you're gonna minimize that distortion. And there's another, another aspect of this as well is that, again, with a conventional speaker, you're pushing a lot of air around. So if you have you know, components in the chassis of the drive unit or things on the baffle, as air is being forced through that, we know you get noises from that. Yeah. Again, there isn't a significant, because the air coming off from this is not, it's not pumping the air in the same way, you're not blowing past these components and creating turbulence noise and all that sort of thing. So perhaps that, you know, these would explain I, I forgot all about that. No, you're absolutely right. You know, you're, we, we use, to, to obtain high output, mm -hmm. you're typically using the air in the chamber available. Mm -hmm. And you have to move that air somewhere because almost, uh, I would say, I don't know, 90% of, or higher, let's say 100%, 100% of the cabinets that we use in, in live sound are all ported. Right, yeah. So we have to do something with that air with, that, uh, with those noises, mm -hmm. uh, chuffing, uh, you name yep. it, we have it. Right. 